So this is the Kindle Scribe and what I wanted to do for probably those who are prospectively buying it is give you a walkthrough of what it's like to use, the different areas of the experience, primarily just to help you get an idea about how it works. So um, I've been using this for maybe 40 days, a little bit of background, and I'm primarily using it for reading. Um, I haven't really expanded much in the note-taking section because number one, it's very prim primal in its software, but it's also something I use the Remarkable for. You can watch the other videos we have on Remarkable and um, our Kindle Scribe review if you haven't yet um, in the link in the description. So this is like the home area. It's actually really well designed, I quite like it. And it's a really nice to get the form factor um, if to give you an idea of the form factor, it's my hand and it's quite big. It's more like a small version of the iPad in its size. Now, a few things that you can do up here is, is search the Kindle score and uh, naturally get all of the stuff um, like that. You can scroll down and find stuff uh, uh, that is recommended to you. But what's nice as well is if you scroll uh, across here, any notebooks you create in the time period that you're reading books, they appear here too. So it's quite nice because they live together in a sense, which is really, really cool. Now you can also go ahead and press uh, plus notebook up here, which means you get a shortcut to the notebook section just to give you a little bit of a hint. Now previously on, if you've had a Kindle before, you'll notice that this area pops down and this is quite nice because you can get an overview of what you need to do. And there's also, the ability to change the warmth up as well. Now I'll talk to that in the settings section, but you can also change the brightness too, increasing up to 24, which is pretty bright to be honest. It does well at that. And you can also switch it to dark mode if you want to and choose the settings and syncs. We'll talk about that later, but you can also go to your library. This is just all of your books. It's none of your sort of, um, other aspects of it and you can use the filtering if you've not used that. I'm going to talk more about note taking because this is what makes it primarily different. Now there are a few filter abilities here so you can sort by certain things like a grid view and what's most recently created and up here you can filter based on whether it's downloaded or not. Now as I said you can go up here and create a new notebook and that's how you do it through this section. So if I said um, you know um, let's call this one sketches. And it still does, I don't know whether you noticed it down here, it still does come up with the sort of text formatting options, which is nice. Uh, it's just something that saves a bit of time. They don't have many options when it comes to the templating. So for example, if I wanted to use a daily planner template, I could do that, I could use the small dots, but the daily planner does a pretty good job of that, to be honest. Let's go ahead and, uh, and uh, demonstrate this. Now this is really what just comes up. Now you can go up here and get a, f a few options. So here you can see and change the cover. So I actually made a mistake there and I can choose the cover too, which is nice. So I can show the current page as the cover or show the first page. So if you set things up, uh, then you can have that. So in this case, I might go and call this one sketches and you can see that's the front front cover and I can swipe right to get a new page. Now, in terms of the, the writing, like you can see like things come out fairly thin. You can go to here and choose your option to how thick you want your, your sketching on any of the paintbrushes you have. And that's, that's the heaviest and this is the finest. So you can see the difference, quite a big difference, which is good. You've also got a highlighter function which you can also change the depth of as well, which is perfect for adding a bit more touch. Now, to be honest, I think in comparison with the Remarkable, I don't think you're gonna get a great sketch. You probably get a generalized sketch in terms of what, pain, uh, what pen brushes are available. Now, if you do have the Remarkable pen, then you have the eraser. It's the same on the uh, Kindle Scribe. You can naturally scrub up and delete it uh, and you can do that using this button as well uh, if you want to. If you just want to go into touch mode, which is just moving between pages, you can do. And you can pull that away. 
Now, the one thing you can do is move this to the right side and press undo, and that's pretty much it when it comes to that. Now, here are the settings. You can delete the current page, you can rename it, but you can also share it with a quick email uh, and share via email, which is quite nice. I like how it saves that email. That's really a, a huge time saver. Now, in terms of the note-taking experience, that's pretty much it, and you can see that it saved that first page. But you can also remove the download, partially delete it, rename it, and open it, and also share the entire notebook from here. Now, a few things that are quite helpful in settings when it comes to utilizing your sketch and your notes um, is the pen. You can set your pen shortcut. So on the, on the Kindle Scribe there is a button. You can choose whether it switches the highlighter pen, eraser, or sticky note on. And I'll show you how sticky notes work in books in this video too. But you can choose book, notebook, options, and you can see the page refresh whenever uh, there's a new term, and also there's a vocabulary builder here. Now, other than that, um, I wanted to show you the warmth setting because this is something I've not seen before, but you can schedule your warmth and you can have it gradually come on based on sunrise and how much depth you want on the warmth, which is really nice too. It's a great addition. And it's great for being able to actually notebook and night as well, which is something very different. So if I'm inside of a book, I can actually go ahead and, uh, okay, I'm on the I'm on this view. If I want to go on the note, sticky note view, say I'm just selecting uh, a bit of text, I could be like, okay, almost everything in the household. So there we go. So I can make a note on it and I can write handwritten notes. So this is perfect. And I can still use all the modifications that I did before. This is perfect for the next year. And I could do a diagram, you know, etc. And you can still use all the formatting options there, which I really like um, as part of the experience, being able to sort of note stuff out. And you can also do the text noting as well. Now, the one thing you can do, so when you come to the end of your book, okay, that's the... That is the, there you go, popular highlights. This is popular highlights that people have done, but there is a section here. Here you go. So this is where you can see all of your highlights and what you've tagged and even the notes in line. And one thing I like about it is you can quickly share that, which is nice because once you've finished a book, you could export it. So that's how the very simple uh, abilities are when you come to tagging notes and being able to add stuff inside of a book. So that's the whole Kindle Scribe, and uh, hopefully you found it helpful in overviewing everything you need to know about the Kindle Scribe. Let us know if you have any questions, do subscribe to us here on Keep Productive, and we'll see you for a future video. Hopefully we can dive more into the topics of productivity.